In the first reading of today, which is chosen from the first book of Kings, we are invited to reflect on Solomon. Solomon took over from his father David. And his father David had left him a fantastic legacy. David was regarded as a great king and as a matter of fact, the Messiah who was to come would be regarded not as a son of any other king, but as son of David. Blind Bartimaeus in the Gospel of Mark, even though he is blind, uses this messianic title to identify Jesus when he says, have mercy on me, son of David. And so David was an extraordinary king. David was extraordinary in many, many ways. And so Solomon had to take over from his father, which was not an easy task. And so God appears to Solomon and God wants to grant Solomon whatever he would wish for. And sometimes when God gives us this gift of wishing for whatever, we've got to be careful because very often the larger majority of us would ask for things for ourselves or would ask for the destruction of others, would ask for our own happiness, our own prosperity, our own riches and our focus would often be on the self. So when the Lord approaches Solomon, it was possible for Solomon to ask for riches, for Solomon to ask for honor, for Solomon to ask for the destruction of his enemies. As the Lord tells him, he could have asked and the Lord would have granted him because the Lord is true to his promise. But what does Solomon do? Solomon asks the Lord for wisdom. And so today, because of this text, Solomon is known as a synonym for wisdom. We associate Solomon with the wise. So the moment somebody says Solomon, the first adjective which comes to our mind would be wisdom. The wise Solomon. In other words, the Lord is pleased that Solomon asked for wisdom. The Lord is pleased that Solomon asked for this gift to discern, to be able to know what is right, to be able to know what is wrong and to have the courage to follow what is right. And so the Lord in the first book of Kings commends Solomon for what he asked and the Lord surely will grant him wisdom. And because Solomon has not been selfish or self-centered in his asking. The Lord will grant him even more and whatever else he asks for. But Solomon will not need then because his wisdom will allow him to realize that he can manage without so many things. In other words, it is the discernment which Solomon is able to make even as he begins his reign as king. And Solomon ruled wisely over all of Israel and Solomon rules intelligently over all of Israel because the Lord granted him, the Lord gifted him the gift of wisdom. In the gospel text of today, we read the last part of the parable discourse of the Gospel of Matthew. And in this parable discourse, the Lord speaks three parables. The first two are similar in their understanding. When the Lord speaks about a treasure hidden in the field and the pearl of great price. He says in the first parable that the man a woman goes into the field to till the field, to plow the field. And even as they are plowing the field, they realize that there is treasure hidden in that field. And the moment they encounter that treasure, they know that this is what they have been looking for all their lives. Even though 
this person is not actively searching for the treasure, sometimes the treasure can be found even if we are not actively searching but engage in the regular work in which we are employed. We might suddenly come across a treasure. The second parable is about the merchant who is actively in search of fine pearls and when he finds this pearl of great value, of great price, the merchant is willing to do anything to sell whatever he has in order to obtain that pearl of great price. So this treasure and the pearl of great price are not only external treasures which the Lord is talking about. Like in the case of Solomon, it is the gift of wisdom. Wisdom is, yes, manifested externally, but wisdom is something which is inherent to a person. And so when the Lord speaks about the treasure in the field, when the Lord speaks about the pearl of great price, he is not only talking about an external treasure, but he is also talking about the treasure of the heart and the treasure of the mind. Like in the case of Solomon, he asked for wisdom. So each of us needs to ask ourselves, what is that treasure for me? What is that pearl of great price? In the final parable, the Lord speaks about the judgment which will come at the end. This dragnet, the parable of the dragnet, draws into it all kinds of people. And so in the net and in our world, there are a variety of people. Some are selfless and giving, others are selfish and not giving. Some look only outside of themselves and reach out as much as they can. Others will focus only on themselves and see how they can benefit. And yet, all of these make up our world. So in each of these cases, we need to ask ourselves what that treasure is of great price, what that pearl of great price is which motivates us to respond. What kind of fish am I which is caught in this dragnet? Am I like the good fish which will choose wisdom as my treasure, as my pearl of great price? Or am I like the corrupted fish which will choose selfishness and self-centeredness. And the Lord is asking us, like Solomon, to ask ourselves what we will choose and the Lord will grant it to us. Make then a wise choice.